Or when did I start wearing a bulletproof vest? I don't have a specific timeline for that. You know what happened? I had got other things. I had got like vehicles, like full blown level six. The same stuff Obama is riding around. Hi, I'm 50 Cent. Let's help Facts Music settle down. We're going to get a chance to kick it. Oh, who's that? Whose phone is that? It's Trina. He's quiet. Oh, man. You f***ed up the whole shot, bro. <laughs> this is a bad example for everyone. Yeah, man. Yo, this is the first time I did spring break. Look how big my clothes was. Why was we wearing clothes that big, right? Damn, it looked like we all was getting dressed as big and tall. I had so much fun doing that, though. It's very rare you get people to agree on something. In fact, the first thing your publicist should do when you go through media training is tell you to stay away from politics and religion because you start to alienate people with whatever you said. And then you see what happened with Kanye when he starts to talk about politics. What they do agree with is magic. It feels like magic when music is spot on. This is cool to even think about this. I would not be thinking about this if I wasn't here. I'm Helen Mirren it was in uh, the television. But once I got towards power, I was out at the festival there in France. We was in Monaco. She's sexy. She'll look at you and you go, oh, shit. <laughs> like, look, it don't matter how. I don't care how old she get. I don't give a what nobody says. <laughs> She's sexy. Her husband is like right there with her. Like, he's just going, oh, that's, that's what she does. You know, she does. You know, but he notices what you notice, that she's sexy. <laughs> It's her confidence, it's everything that she is for all of these years. She's gonna be sexy forever. This is Wankster, the first, my first music video. Like at this point, my biz biggest expense was an apartment in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania was $800 a month. <laughs> Until you have enough success that you start to create lifestyle around it, you don't even have bills. Like my grandmother, the first thing I did when I did the deal was I bought her a small Mercedes Benz, like the C-Class Mercedes Benz. And um, I left on a tour. That was my only expense, that car and that $800 a month apartment. And by the time I came back, I had $38 million. A journalist told me about Mike's house. I said, I should buy it. Then I went and saw it and looked at it and I bought it. Because, you know, when you make $38 million, if you don't spend it, the IRS is just coming to take it anyway. You guys still have it? No. I saw it and gave the, the proceeds to charity. You know what? 2003 was so much fun. There was so much energy around me as a new artist. That you can't recreate. Like, you know, you may get a, a second chance at some things, but never a first impression. You know, I think between 2003 and 2005 that I've seen a version of every kind of vagina out there. <laughs> I came being uh, a guy who would have what he could have, not what he wants. And then when it shifts so fast that you go, what? What happened? You're not prepared for it. And they're so excited that you're going, me? And you just have the greatest time of your life. Now look, in 2005, you start feeling like you're hot. So all of a sudden, you have transformed. You're a bad bitch, right? So now that you're this bad bitch, right? You're looking at the girls looking at you and you're going, oh, she thinks she's going to get me. And now you think you're so hot that you're running from the girls. But the after party is not happening in your hotel room anymore because you had this newfound value for yourself that you're running to be in the room by yourself. And that period was the period that I actually was going through contracts and kind of learning what I committed to. What gym routine was it for this guy with this six pack right here, right? At this point, I was 15 years old. And if you see that gate behind me, it's the gate to uh, Spoffit Juvenile Facility. The fitness there was more, uh, you had to kind of keep yourself together to create less altercations for you. If you took care of yourself and you, you felt like, so people would look at you, because it's, it's a juvenile facility, but if they look at you like you might be a hard time, they might not want to have the altercation, so. This next picture is in the same time period, and it's like a cookout. It was like a visit for my family at that time period. And it's crazy, because I don't have a lot of pictures of me in that actual age. I wonder where y'all got this. It was a cookout. I was eating like burgers and franks and stuff like that when it says what were you eating in that time period. I didn't have like a, a extremely healthy regimen. This is such the young girl part of my, my life where you don't have to kind of watch dieting. It's just being active. This is me getting to where it could be fat or a muscle to that point. Like before that, it's like you, you're just a skinny guy anyway, you know, when your metabolism is getting rid of everything you eat anyway. This is a three-headed monster photo shoot. I never forget it because it's the first cover of me, M, and Dre shot. And this is the photo shoot from it. And uh, my tattoos changed since then. <laughs> I put on a lot of weight since that point though. Three, four years ago, I was playing a, a character in For Life. I needed to be bigger for the character. So I was eating everything out of the sun, trying to get as big as I could. 
possibly. And then um, training differently, I was lifting really heavy weights instead of like a light weights, a lot of reps and stuff like that. And I got the biggest point I was. I was like 235. The physical training at that part and the supplements and stuff that I was taking got me to the biggest point that I've been. I look like I pick things up, I put things down. <laughs> When did I start wearing a bulletproof vest? I don't have a specific timeline for that. You know what happened? I had got other things. I had got like vehicles, like full blown level six, the same stuff Obama is riding on. So it didn't make sense to uh, to have to wear it every day because it was like in between that one space that I was going into the building and coming out of the building. So I started to wear it less, but it was this is almost a hallmark. Like the my beginning of my career is I was seeing more often with it than without it. M never gave me advice about dealing with fame, but he uh, is one of the most important people to me and to my career. He offered me uh, a safe place. He just never participated in anything negative against me, just wanted me to win the entire time. You don't even know you can make a relationship like that in the older adult stages of your life. Like I think um, at that point, we try to hold on to people, like our friends, they've been friends for a long time. We create value for them in a different way. And he just came in and was that guy for me. 50 Cent is definitely not as smart as Curtis. Some of the stuff that you're saying in the records to keep up with the tones of the culture, it matches the, uh, the early stages and the thought process at that point with a lack of a lot of information. So I had to dumb it down to do it. And this is why I don't do it as often as I did in the very beginning. I could really do what I've been doing, sustain it and continue going, but it would damage my ability to do the things that I want to do moving forward because they would believe that I just made the choice and I'm actively going in that direction. And it would be hard to make people comfortable or have them feel safe with the things that I'm doing now at the present moment in film and television. So it's an easy choice for me to go as time evolve and do some different stuff. I'm developing the Eight Mile film into a series. You know, so they should expect it to be just as big as the feature film and, you know, just huge. It'll be huge. You know, and then the interest in it, because people, the time period, Eight Mile was uh, capturing was further back. So as we move it into modern times, you'll see things that how we function now. Technology changed the way people enter the music business. This is why you don't see groups in the music business. Like you see so many individual artists because there's no artist development. It used to take time. They find Justin Timberlake over here, get this guy from over here, bring this guy, and then we got NSYNC, and then we got Backstreet, and then we got all of these cool boy bands because you put all of that talent into one show. When you leave them out there and they reach the audience before they reach the record company, because they're, if, if you got a computer and you got a decent microphone in front of it, you can buy the beat from YouTube, record your record, put it on iTunes and YouTube, your camera shooting 4K. As soon as you do that, you're in the music business. It's just how much interest are you generating? Some people start to take off immediately and they get a lot. And other people got to work at it until they're good. And it's not negative that you have to work at it because an easy job is a hard job. People forget they're working. And then uh, the people who have to work to become good enough, they um, have the habit of working. So they continue to work and they can sustain it because of the work that they had to do in the beginning. And then the next milestone I want to reach or the next uh, goal for me would be able to make diversity seem like the norm. You know, I want to be able to create projects that command attention by being multicultural projects, not just black projects. But I think when you when you do that, that you, you're doing something almost for the first time at this point. Like a lot of the, uh, the projects, you make a project, I always say this, if you make a project, you make an all white cast in the project, you're up against the greatest cinematography of all time because it's been done so well for so long. It's very hard for it to be significant. And then when you start to offer, offer different cultures, different people's journeys and stuff like that, we can tap into something that hasn't been done. And it can be amazing. It could be a step forward. I'm about to go on the final lap tour, so I'll be training and I'll be 20, maybe 25 pounds lighter by the time I get up to go. I hired a new trainer. I got the people helping me diet and stuff like that. But I'm, I'll be all the way right. I'll leave no stones unturned to make sure I can deliver a performance like the first performance. I don't want to be tired doing it. It's intense. Like the, my schedule is like almost every day. Like, different territory or a different show. I like, you know, I like to do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's where the money is important to me. Money is important to me, so if you tell me no, I can green light my own idea. That's it. Like in the tour, when they, when they get comfortable telling me no, I say, why are you telling me that? Like, what the f wrong with you? Like, you, tell me how much it costs. Don't tell me no. And then I'll figure out if I'll pay for it. But I'm only asking you for it because I've seen somebody else with it. I saw 
how many pyro cues can you have? What can you do here? What can you do? Man, stop playing, man. Just get, get what I ask for, please. Tell me it's a hazard or something. The venue don't allow you to do it. But other than that, don't tell me no. Tell me what I got to do to get it. At the final lap, you want to tell me my final tour, I can't do what I want to do? Get the f out of here. SB50 said, I'm out.